Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. Hey, I'm on time this year. It's the annual release of the Joe Bonamassa Signature Epiphone Guitar. This time, he's rebirthing a guitar that he just recently got called Lazarus. So before we break into this, we kind of need to talk a little bit about Epiphone Joe Bonamassa history here. Joe Bonamassa, if you're not familiar, he's essentially a child prodigy that wowed all the big stars, and now he has this big following himself. He's a fantastic guitar player. He tours the world and has amassed this great giant collection that he houses in two different locations, probably even more than we even know, that he calls Nerdville. But every year, normally around October, he'll release a new signature guitar with Epiphone. And it's not only his name that sells these things, it's simply because he reissues really cool guitars from his collection. Just looking on his website, this has at least gone on since 2014. In 14, he had this blue standard. In 15, he did the green standard. In 2016, he had this Firebird 1, which was kind of interesting to see from Epiphone. 2017 had Amos, a reissue of his Flying V Carina, which commands quite a pretty penny on the used market yet today. 2018, I didn't see a lot of talk about his 355, but it's kind of cool. And then in 19, the famous Norm Burst that he bought from Norm at Norm's Rare Guitars. And then, hey, just a couple of months ago, we documented his 2020 signature release, a three pickup Les Paul Custom that had signature Epiphone tuners on it stock from the factory. And that's just the ones that were listed on his website. I honestly, I've lost track of all the different signatures because not only does he get Epiphone signatures, he's also got the signature Gibsons. Pretty much the most infamous one of them all being the Bonabird, which one day I'll review. It's a custom shop Les Paul with a Firebird headstock. What's well, not to like? <laughs> but anyways, let's go ahead and crack into Lazarus. So the case that they give you it's just pretty much the basic Epiphone style. I'm not seeing anything too crazy except for the fact that they've tried to give it a lift-in vibe by giving it a brown vinyl covering. As usual, it gets stamped Bonamassa Nerdville CA. You've got a golden Epiphone logo, and it says Fragile at the top. As far as the latches go, nice. I like those. They feel really stiff, but not like overly stiff or too loose. This is actually a pretty nice case. But let's see this guitar in the flesh. Oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> I'm going to have to fix that. All right, so what happened there is this must have got jostled in shipping, and one of these screws fell out of the pickup. Now, hopefully that didn't destroy the base plate, and I'll just be able to screw that back in. It, it's a non-issue, but here we go. First impressions of this thing. Pretty sharp frets. The case is obnoxiously pink, but the flame top, it's pretty all right for this thing. But now that we've seen this thing, let's talk about what is Lazarus in case you haven't seen Gibson's official video on this thing. So this guitar first came to Joe's attention in December 2019, when he saw on Instagram one of his friends, David Neely, an LA luthier, posted this on his page. I mean, you can see those photos right here and follow him on Instagram here. It was just this strange red colored Les Paul. It kind of looked like a candy apple red spray paint. There was some blue finish on the frets. And essentially he, Joe, and like a whole group of other Les Paul fanatics went to this restaurant and they were just all staring at it, all giving their opinions on what they thought it was. And Joe ended up buying it for an undisclosed sum. But he thought it was like a late 58, early 59, something like that. He kind of took a gamble on this guitar because just looking at that, it could have really been anything. I'm really curious to see how much he actually paid for that. Like, is that a $100,000 gamble or is it like a $50,000 gamble? I mean, if that was truly a burst under there like he thought it was, I'm sure the money was pretty high. But anyways, he sent it down to Kim at Historic Makeovers, a very reputable business that remakes Gibson guitars. Like you can send them an R9, they'll rip the fretboard off, put real Brazilian rosewood on it, age it, make the top carve perfect. It's an expensive process, but a lot of guys like that. It's cheaper than buying a 59, that's for sure. But as Kim was taking that ugly red finish off, he uncovered a beautiful, fantastic top. I mean, look at it here in Joe's hands. He really did luck out. And they called it Lazarus because that's a person in the book of John in the Bible that was brought back to life by Jesus. And brought back to life it was. Now, 
Epiphone. I love that you made this, but this looks nothing like Joe's guitar. <laughs> it's got the same color. And, I mean, even the spec sheet says it's supposed to have a really wide flame. And I'm not complaining about this flame top. It's nice, but it doesn't look anything like Joe's. But out of all the Lazaruses I've seen so far, which is only like five or six of these, this is actually a really nice top on it. So, you guys remember the 59 Les Paul reissue that Epiphone has currently? Those today cost $849, and they come in an aged dark burst finish as well as an aged dark cherry. Lazarus here is a limited edition and basically just copied every single spec of theirs but made it slightly better, and it cost $50 more, $899. And it only comes in this Lazarus finish, as they call it. It's pretty much just like a lemon burst. There's not much of a burst to it at all. It's just kind of like a yellow top. However, a difference between them are the nut materials. The 59s get a new bone, whereas this is a Graftech nut. And one of the biggest things that I wanted to see before I said it was actually a spec is they advertise these as a one-piece neck. And normally Epiphones have a scarf joint, they're multi-pieced. And a lot of the newer ones have like a little bit of a heel cap or something going on. This is truly a one-piece neck. So just based on first impressions looking at the specs here, I think just the one-piece neck is well worth that $50 premium when you're comparing brand new prices. And if we're getting technical here, the 59s have a triple A grade veneer, whereas this one has a quadruple. You know, example to example, it's going to vary. But, you know, technically, it's a better spec guitar in that aspect as well. And we've got the same Gibson pickups in here. We'll take a look at those on the workbench. Now, when you compare those two to the Slash signature guitars that costs $50 even more than Lazarus, it's like... On the spec sheets, the Lazarus blows the Slash Les Pauls out of the water. However, I haven't actually tried one, so maybe I'm not being fair to it. We will see that big compilation video of every single Slash Gibson, every single Slash Epiphone. We'll do a nice little comparison video. You guys made that like goal last time. I'm just waiting for him to all come in. Overall, I would say this guitar has a very nice spec sheet. It's a little bit expensive for an Epiphone, yeah, but the higher-end Epiphones, they're great. A lot of people will struggle should you get a low-end Gibson or a high-end Epiphone. It really depends on the person and what your playing style's like. In many ways, yes, this probably is better than, say, like the Les Paul Special Tribute Raven that we had just talked about not too long ago. If what you want is a 59-style looking guitar. I'm noticing the uh, the finish. It's not a full-on gloss. It's not quite satin. It's like somewhere in between there. It's a, a relatively full neck profile without being way too big. And of course you get that cool Epiphone Kalamazoo style headstock on this one. And this one appears to be a two-piece back. So yeah, very well specced. Now as far as the case goes, <laughs> that is... I, I know the Liftons actually had pink cases, but I think this is, you know, a bit brighter than we expect. You know, maybe they look like that brand new, but as they age, they kind of get a darker hue. So I guess we'll just have to see how these things go. But having the single neck rest is technically, you know, a vintage era correct spec, so we can't fault them on that. But inside the case, you get a COA. That has a pretty cool photo of Joe Bonamassa there with the Lazarus which it's nice to have a COA, not all Epiphones have that. And then we get a couple of stickers and other random goodies in here, warranty information. And the case is made in China, if you're curious. I mean, the guitar's made in China too. So to learn more about this Lemon Burst, let's go ahead, throw it on the workbench to take an individual look at its parts and specs. All right, my friends, let's look inside Lazarus here. So, I, I figured out what was going on with our neck pick up here. Okay, so this is the one I fixed. This is the, how it shipped from the factory. No wonder it fell out. It was hardly even in the threads at all. A good little bump would cause that to fall. And I'm noticing these springs are absolute trash. Like, if you don't have to compress that string before that gets through, I know it's a pain in the butt. But if you don't have to do that, you need a better spring because you won't be able to get your full range of adjustments. Now another downfall to those weak springs in here is, I mean, look how much this neck pickup moves as compared to our bridge pickup. It's fairly secure. You have to try to move it. This thing, yeah. <laughs> 
You need stronger springs, but that is how it came stock from the factory. So just letting you know. So that's the first upgrade I would suggest. Uh, get, get some better quality springs on these guys because the pickups, I mean, they're Gibson Burst Bucker 2 and Gibson Burst Bucker 3 here. I mean, the bridge pickup was fine. So I'm actually wondering if there was an issue that they couldn't get this pickup down low enough because of the springs. But there we go, confirmed. Gibson pickups in here. Kind of seems strange to put Gibson pickups with the metric style pickup rings, but yeah, whatever. <laughs> That's just kind of a snobbery type thing. If you're really familiar with Les Pauls, things like this, they just look strange. But anyways, we do have a long neck tenon in here. So that is a nice spec that they've got going on here. N for neck, I would assume. And you can see the maple cap onto the mahogany body right here. So what you're seeing here is actually a paper thin real wood veneer though. The cap itself is plain maple. And that just seems to make sense. Put ugly maple wood under here, then make it pretty. It's still a maple top. It's gonna sound pretty much the exact same. And then you can take all those really pretty woods, just slice them paper thin and make so many more pretty guitars. Like uh, from a conservationist standpoint, real figured maple tops being put on like that seems kind of like a waste, but at the same time, it kind of hurts to chop up the really nice looking wood, but yeah, it's a, a moral dilemma here. But in our bridge pickup cavity, that's what it looks like. Bonamassa 59 LZ for Lazarus. Now this also has an N written there. So I, I guess I don't know what that stands for. Also right there. Maybe it's actually a Chinese symbol for something. Route here. I know that has come up in the past before, but the routes look pretty good. And as far as the readings go, we get 8.47K ohms in the bridge. Neck position is 8.12 and our middle is 4.14. Next up, we have our bridge and tailpiece. The bridge is just your standard Epiphone lock tone. It's ABR1 in style. They even have it on going the right way. Then the tailpiece here, also Epiphone lock tone, just says Epiphone on the back. Lock tone, if you're not familiar, this is your first Epiphone you've watched me taking apart. See those little tongs right there? Those grip the tailpiece. So if you're changing strings, it's not gonna come off unless you try to take it off. We've got two volumes, two tones, regular Les Paul stuff here with the toggle switch right here. Now in reading the spec sheet again, this finish is called aged gloss and it makes sense now that I've seen the guitar. When I was reading it before I had unboxed it, I thought, okay, aged gloss, it's gonna have like a yellowed clear coat to it. And it kinda does, it's not super yellowed out. But what they're saying is they've buffed this into a gloss and then they kind of cut it down a little bit to give it the appearance of kind of a worn in guitar. It's, it's just like a somewhere in between a gloss and a satin finish is what I would describe it as. And this veneer is very nice. But again, let, let's not kid ourselves. These things look absolutely nothing like the actual Lazarus. That thing has such a wide flame figuring to it. It's an actual spec on the spec sheet. Triple A wide grain flame veneer. This isn't wide enough. It's very nice, but it's not wide enough. But then again, finding wood like that, I mean, I don't blame them. So if you buy this thinking you are getting Lazarus, this is a replica, you're gonna be disappointed. But if you're buying this thinking, hey, it's a limited edition 1959 Epiphone that has a sweet one piece neck that makes it better than the standard runs, you're gonna love it. So keep your expectations within line, I guess is what I'm saying. But that is a real wood veneer. The flame figuring dances and varies on each one. And it's a two piece top, just like the vintage ones. Now the pick guard, this is so thick. <laughs> like I wish I had a regular Les Paul pick guard to compare this with because this just feels obnoxiously thicker than normal. But I like it because you can tell it's a quality product that's not going to crack on you so that's actually pretty nice so if you wanted to take the pick card off it'd look like this kind of gives you greeny vibes then you just swap your neck pickup around you have to flip that around too maybe flip out your magnets as well to give you that peter green out of phase sound oh yeah you could easily take one of these things and uh, turn it into a greeny and that's the other thing that's nice about this jb model his name is nowhere on this Sell off the original case. Get yourself a used Gibson case or anything for the same money that you get from it. So even if you're not a JB fan, you could still like this guitar. And I think he designs a lot of these with that in mind. He wants to please a lot of people. I guess while we're at it, 
take these pickups out, sell them, get yourself a signature set of slash pickups, the zebra ones, and you've got yourself a very convincing AFD that is probably better specced and a little bit cheaper than the actual slash version. I doubt we'll see these things stay in production long. And that's the other thing you can talk about. These Joe Bonamassa models have a tendency to hold and appreciate in value. Now this one, if it wasn't for the one piece neck, I would probably say, uh, be careful if you're buying this strictly for investment purposes, because it's too similar to the 59 reissue that Epiphone is probably going to have in production for the foreseeable future. So there are alternatives to this one, unlike the Black Beauty last year or something very similar to Amos. Now, do I see these things hyperinflating like twice the value? No, I mean, they still haven't even sold out of the initial batch, but this is, I'm recording this within about four days of release, so it's hard to tell anymore, but I really don't see it being worth more than maybe a couple hundred bucks more than new, if it even appreciates. So moving on from our mahogany body with maple top, we have a one piece mahogany neck, as I was telling you about earlier. And the only thing that would have made this better is if it had a real rosewood fretboard. This is the Indian Laurel. Which, I mean, you either like this or you don't. Some of them are pretty good. This one I just conditioned, so it's got some decent color to it. But it's it's just not quite as smooth as rosewood. But this example is actually pretty nice. Now, I was telling you earlier, the frets felt a little bit sharp, and they do. I'm sure you could take this to a luthier and get those rounded off just a little bit nicer. Because it's not fret sprout, it's just your finger kind of catches along the edge of the fret. But depending on your playing style, I mean, your fingers might not ever go there. It's not going to cut you or anything. I just notice it when I felt the neck. As far as neck specs, advertised at a 12 inch radius with the standard 24 and 3 quarter inch scale length. Then we get a 1.7 inch nut width, which increases to 2.09 by the 12th. First fret neck depth 0.92 and by the 12th 1.03. Yeah, so the more I've been handling this guitar, the bigger this neck feels. Like it's still not R7, R8 baseball bat style neck, but it's pretty darn full. And Joe was saying this isn't even as big as the original Lazarus because he thought it'd just be too much for most people. Here's that neck profile at the first and 12th fret. They call this a 59 rounded C neck profile shape. It definitely has that very characteristic, almost D shaped neck to it as a lot of these Epiphones will. Like it's really wide feeling. It's not quite as rounded U shape wise as like a lot of people will think when they think 50s neck. And unfortunately, I was really hoping this would have the same frets as the Alex Lifeson Les Paul, but unfortunately, no. It's the kind that's very scratchy. So you might consider doing like a really heavy duty polishing job to the frets if that bugs you. That's always the one spec about Epiphones I always get sad about. I wish they would spend more time on their frets to make them feel better. And that life's an Epiphone. I mean, check out the review and demo right here. That was one of the best Epiphones ever, in my opinion. Like I didn't care for the Floyd Rose. It just felt so nice on the neck. But unfortunately, that's not the case on this one. But now we move on to our headstock, also that aged gloss finish. It looks like from the factory there's like a, it's not a ding, it's not really a scratch. It just looks like the, the finish reflects a little bit differently like there, maybe a little smudge. But there we can see our mahogany neck. You can adjust your truss rod in there. Then you have a Les Paul model silk screen as well as the Epiphone logo and our Klusen style tuners. And it is important to note, once again, this is a graph tech knot. That's different from the regular 59s. They have the Epiphone new bone that everything else uses. Now, which one's better? I'm not sure, but it's a different spec. But now let's flip on over to the backside. I'm not sure if all of them are going to be two piece, but so far on the website, they show a two piece back and this one had a two piece back. Does that mean yours won't have a three piece out of nowhere? No, because it's not advertised as a two piece back. It just says mahogany back. But I really like this one because it has a little bit of a, a dancing wood grain knot right there. Oh man, it looks like a smiley face. Do you see it? You got two eyes and it's kind of like nightmare before Christmas guy with his smile. That's a good spooky episode for us. But there is like a spot right there in the wood. If you look at it in the light, it almost looks like it has a very slight impression into the body. I would have never felt it if I wasn't seeing that in the light right there. 
But as far as inside the back control cavity, CTS POTS 500K, it's all hand wired. There's no quick connect in this one. So you might make the argument, hey, how about I save myself 250 bucks by one of the 5060s Epiphone standards? I mean, you could, and then upgrade it to this and then buy some Gibson pickups and you'd have something pretty similar. However, the 59 style Epiphones, I think they just put a little more attention to detail in it, especially with the neck once again, for the Lazarus model anyways. But you have to remember, those things do not have a case. So that's like 100, 200 bucks right there depending on what kind of case you buy. So in the long run, you might be better off with one of the 59s and just selling those pickups and getting what you do want if your preferences are different. But you've got your output jack on the side, strap buttons in your regular locations. As far as QC goes, oops, we missed our screw hole from being in the wood. So that one essentially does nothing for us. That one was really close, but that's still pretty well secured in there. So doesn't affect the guitar, but it's just something they could know about. As far as the edges go, they do have the thin binding in the cutaway. However, it's so dark red stained right there, you can just barely even tell the maple cap is exposed. I'm betting they do that because a lot of people just think that is actually a cosmetic defect <laughs> instead of a premium feature. Oh man, I'm getting flashbacks to the ketchup, mayonnaise, and mustard PRS guitar. You've got the ketchup on the back, mayonnaise for your binding, and the mustard top. Uh, looking around the edges, this is a, a pretty nice two pieces of mahogany, I would say. And then we've got the one-piece neck here. I'm going to hammer it into your head one more time. This. This is what a normal Epiphone looks like. So normally we have a scarf joint right here, somewhere around there, and and a lot of them have it like right here. This doesn't have any of that. This is one solid piece of wood. Now, you could technically make the argument, hey, that scarf joint is actually going to make the headstock break area stronger. And maybe that's why they continue to do it that way. But that's not tradition. <laughs> so if you're a traditional guy and you wanna pick up a cool guitar for about a thousand bucks, you know, maybe check this thing out. They've got your handcrafted in China sticker here, QC inspection, Epiphone branded Clusen tuners, and here's our serial number dating it to 2021. Looks like this one was stamped in May. And to build upon that wood chipping out, pretty much every single one of these screws was over tightened so it never actually stops, it just keeps spinning and spinning. Now the back plate still held on to it, but that's just one of those small QC things that I think companies can work on. So last thing to capture today is the weight. And wow, that's not bad. Eight pounds, 6.9 ounces. I would dare say that's really good. I didn't see anything in the spec sheet about weight relief, but it might have it. I'm not sure. That's, that's a really good weight. So let's go ahead, plug it in and hear how it sounds. Let's go ahead and run through the tones of Lazarus here. Starting with that neck pickup, very deep sounding. Now we'll try that bridge pickup. Try it in the middle position.
so far, pretty nice. Let's try some distortion. <laughs> There's a good tone. Now that we know all about the new signature Joe Bonamassa Lazarus Les Paul, what are my final thoughts on this thing? On the spec sheets, this thing is an absolute beast. In person, it's, it's just okay. It didn't really blow me away, but it didn't really disappoint me either. I pretty much knew what to expect when I ordered this guitar. I wish they could have nailed the finish a little bit better because his, you can tell, it's kind of like the very first prehistoric how that's aged. It has like a very slight tint to it. It's that really beautiful faded out, washed out burst, whereas this is... I don't know, just, just a little bit too zesty for my taste, I guess you could say, in the lemon department. But that's just me. I'm not a big fan of the lemon tops. I know there's a lot of guys out there. So I think it's fantastic for somebody who likes this color scheme, doesn't mind that it doesn't have the super wide flame that his has. I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, people haven't really known about that Lazarus guitar for that long. So I don't think anybody's that upset that it's not a perfect one for one reissue. It's just another cool guitar from Epiphone that has some pretty nice specs. I really enjoy that one piece neck. That is very nice. Overall, I would say I'm not a big fan of this vintage gloss finish. Not on this guitar anyways. I think it's high end enough that we should just have a full on gloss finish on that because that really would have popped this top and I think that would help sell this for a lot of people. It does feel nice on the back of the neck though, so maybe they could at least just did it on the top. But if you're only shopping for an Epiphone Les Paul, you've narrowed it down, that's what you want next in your collection, I would highly suggest one of these things. I mean, it is specced very, very well. And uh, one thing before I leave here, I'm not sure when you guys will be able to see it, but there's a little bit of flamed figuring in the neck, like right here. You can see it while you're playing, it kind of dances around. And since the back is such a bright red color, it almost reminds me of like the flamed maple necks like sometimes you'll have on Norlin era Gibsons and some other custom orders. So that was kind of a cool little spec. So, Troglodytes, I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on this guitar in the comment section. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.
As always, if you're interested in being the next owner of one of these demo guitars, you can check them out on my website, troglisguitarshow.com. There's some links in the description. Mm -hmm.